Hey everyone, stay tuned to the end of the video if you're interested in finding out information about how to talk with me on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Enjoy the video now. guys, welcome to Thinking Theology. I'm Don. I don't take dogmatic stances on things here. I'm more of a philosopher. With a th I do have a theological background just because I studied it on my own for decades. But I don't preach dogma. I don't care if you're an atheist. I don't care if you're a Christian. What I care about in life really is if somebody's kind of nice or kind or just to themselves. Just don't be a douche. But I did a list and it turned out to be 1500 things that won't exist in a perfect world or in an ideal world which some people call heaven some call paradise whatever you want to call it and i use five basic premises from the bible right i'm not saying these are true i'm not saying these are going to happen i'm just saying that as a thought experiment if there's no pain tears sorrow or death what would that world look like and then add to it if there's one God, if, keep in mind, these are conditionals, if, and this is the theological, or this is the philosophical part of it, where you just look at the basic premises and see what might flow from them. If there's a world in which there's no pain, tears, sorrow, or death, that is not the world in which we live now, and there's a world in which there's one God that everybody recognizes as the boss, let's just say it's the one God, what would that world look like? So I'm just going to read the next 10 on the list. This is part of a series. Every so often I'll read another 10. And then you see if you could spot the train of thought, the line of thinking, the nexus between the premises to get to this thing, the things on the list. I'm just going to read 10 of them here. Okay. Weekends. Will there be weekends in such a world? Guilt by association. Do you use a Mac or a PC? Why wouldn't that exist in a, why would Macs or PCs perhaps not exist in a world in which there's no pain, tears, sorrow, or death? Systematic theology, unpleasant surprises, sorrow, jaywalking. Now, why wouldn't jaywalking exist? Think about what produces death, too. This is one of the biggies here. This is probably one of the biggest things that I got more things on the list from is the notion if there's no death, what produces death, right? Now, jaywalking, is it that you're walking across the street where there are automobiles and automobiles produce pollution? Is it that there won't be police in that world? Is it that there won't be blacktop because blacktop is derived from oil-based petroleum products mined from the earth? What types of machinery mine things from the earth? So now you can see where things sort of worked away in a different direction when you consider things that produce death and how they impact something like jaywalking. Too many frogs, reproductions, things that are just copied. Will they exist or not? I don't think so, but why? And the last one is in the form of a question. Cities. Will cities exist in a world in which Everybody recognizes there's one God. I'm not saying this is going to happen. This is just part of the fun thought experiment. All right, folks, I'll read your comments. If you have an idea for a video, let me know. I'll look at it. But I do look at things philosophically. You could come at it with a hardcore atheistic stance, a hardcore fundamentalist stance. And I'll just look at the ways in which the arguments are being constructed. And I might even have a comment or two on the way you're standing in it if you're overly pompous. Because some of the comment, comments, of course, in theological discourse are extraordinarily pompous. So uh, anyway, all right, folks, have a great day. See you on another video. Keep thinking theology. Hey, everyone. This is just a video to let you know that I'm available on a one-on-one -on -one basis for personal coaching or for conversations about theological topics. Could be relationships you're having with somebody who's a bit toxic in their faith. Maybe they're over the top. Maybe you're having questions, uh, maybe doubts, or just wondering about your church or whatever. The theology obviously covers a broad range and spectrum of issues. So if you need or want to speak with somebody, 
about these topics in a non-judgmental way, non-confrontational way, I'm available on a one-on-one -on -one basis. I've been doing this for many years, not just with theology, with executive business coaching. I work in personal spaces with people who are going through a divorce. And this is not about establishing your faith or challenging you on faith. This has nothing to do with your particular denomination, faith, religion. This is about relationships and how to process some of the nuances of your faith that you may not have considered that may ease your mind about how you're thinking about things or approaching things. So my, my normal fee for executive business coaching is $250 per hour, but for theological topics, I've kept it at $95 per hour, and some folks may even need special consideration on that fee, and we could discuss that if you have financial hardship. And our conversations take place by phone, and we'll make a lot of progress in a short period of time. So don't hesitate to reach out. I'm very approachable. I've been doing this for many years. My direct email is thinkingtheologytoday at gmail.com. That comes directly to me, and it's scrolling across the screen now, but it's also in the description box below. So if you're interested in talking with me on a one-on-one -on -one basis, that's how to do it. All right, folks, have a great day. I'll see you on another video. Keep thinking theology.